coming to you from the Deep South. This is the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast. High impact leadership is not reserved for leaders, and it has nothing to do with your position, title, or rank. However, it does have everything to do with your character. It's time to climb to the next level and beyond, personally and professionally. Now, let's start making it happen with your host, Max Story. Hello and welcome to another episode of Real People Getting Real Results. And and, and you saw the, the headline there. We've got Renee the Sponge Duran back. And he's not a boxer, but he, he could be a boxer. You used to box, didn't you, Renee? I did. I did uh, experiment with boxing for a year. <laughs> yeah. You, you missed the name, though. It should have been the sponge. Like, you can take a punch. You soak it up like it ain't even there. That's funny. That's a funny story because yeah, there was a time where I was uh, boxing at the San Fernando gym down the street from my house. <laughs> and uh, I I was first year boxer and, you know, I got in pretty good shape before I stepped foot in the gym. So I thought I was big and bad and just naturally talented because I got like really long arms. So I was like with the mindset, I'm going to be the next Muhammad Ali and it's <laughs> it's just going to click for me in the ring well they put i guess like the coaches picked up on that vibe that i was giving and they put me with this guy and he was much shorter than me he was like a mexican boxer from mexico yeah and uh he he was he had the accolades like golden gloves championships and stuff like that in mexico um and in the ring he we were we were boxing and and uh he didn't he didn't drop me but it wasn't pretty like he definitely pieced me up pretty good <laughs> and uh at the end of it that's that's he did tell me he's like man i was trying to drop you i was trying to draw i couldn't drop you <laughs> and uh so yeah it would have been a fitting name as the sponge <laughs> renee the sponge dude on <laughs> soaking up the punches yeah all right so so everybody listened this is uh Renee's second time on the show. So he's the first follow-up back March 15th when we released the, the previous episode with you, man. So that's like eight months. And and we we titled you, I call that, you know, you know me. A lot of people don't, but this might be their first time listening. But I I refer when I'm when I'm learning and growing, I refer to being in sponge mode, right? I like to soak up the knowledge. And you were you already doing that and highly encourage anyone to to go back and listen to that episode i, I meant to check i forgot i think it's episode two i can't remember it was it was pretty early on back back in the uh, real people getting real results lineup so highly encourage you to go back and get the get the whole story uh but we got renee back and a lot been going on renee i don't even know what all to talk about but it's, it's been a lot so i'm gonna let you lead off i mean we left we left left off with you back in march what all's mm -hmm. been going on since march Man, it feels it feels like it's been longer, but I can't. It blows me away that it's only been eight months. That because a lot has happened in eight months. So, um, well, first I just want to say that I really uh, I thank you for for letting me be here on your show. Uh, I really love what you're doing, like the especially the title, uh, "Real People Getting Real Results," because I think that's so important. Um, it's super important, especially for me, because social media is really good about showing the end result. Um, and I think what's missing is the, you know, the real people getting real results. You know, we see the superhero celebrities and larger than life folks, but we don't get to see their process. You know, we don't get to see that training montage on the way. It, and I feel like that's what we're doing right now. Um, so I, I love that. I really think that's awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, you, you yeah. shared before the struggle, the struggles you went mm -hmm. through early on. That's what the the other video is, is about with you. And that's why I encourage people to go back, get get the whole story because you, you're missing a foundation and 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 the, the part that makes what we're about to talk about really more powerful, right? Understanding the foundation of where you come from. So if you want to just, just give a little snapshot, like five or 10 minutes, mm -hmm. maybe or not even 10, maybe five, just of uh, your, your struggle, where you come from in case somebody this is the first time they've seen you and in case they don't go back and watch the other one, just a little bit of foundation stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a so little snapshot is back. Geez. I want to say maybe 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, uh, I was struggling with like major depression and, um, 
I even it got so bad that I was suicidal and I attempted suicide twice. Um, and thank God that I, it wasn't successful either way. I'm here. That's how come I'm here before you. Right. Yeah. And um, I, I just it was a mindset issue for me. It was a really it was a mindset issue that I felt like I didn't hold any of the cards. Everything was just happening to me. Um, I, I wasn't I wasn't investing in myself, um, in my health, my mental health, education in, in any kind of way, any kind of meaningful way. Um, and I had I had a, a mistaken mindset where I thought that, you know, everybody else was doing their thing and living their life and going down a straight linear path. Um, and that was for them. It wasn't possible for me. That was my mindset. Um, and over the years of developing um, wisdom, soaking up that, sponging up that wisdom, um, I've had a series of events in my life where it just kind of clicked for me. But it didn't, it didn't, it wouldn't have clicked for me had I not been making the moves to get myself in those situations. Um, and the whole you know the whole uh, to wrap it up it all was about mindset it was always in my court it it was always me it was never anything outside that was going to come save me it was what i chose to do with what, what was happening to me um so that yeah and here we are now i'm i'm married i've been happily married for 8 years now um i have three beautiful children um i've been saved by jesus christ uh, I lived, I live with joy. I just have overflowing joy now. And uh, I, I never, it wasn't from medication or fancy expensive therapy or anything. It's just by understanding and soaking up the, the wisdom that's out there. There's so much wisdom out there. Should you seek it um, and apply it? It's so now seek wisdom, but also applying it is what got me here. I, I believe. Yeah, that's outstanding. So Go back and check out that first episode with Renee. He, I mean, he digs deep. You go into the the, the rough stuff, right? You give a play by play of oh, yeah. one of those uh, potential at attempted suicide attempts. So any, mm -hmm. anybody anybody might be struggling with that. You need to go check out that and and let let Renee motivate and inspire you. So I don't know where you want to start. I, all I know is last time we talked, it was kind of you had shared with me you were looking for a promotion. I don't know if you've had. I mean, promotions or one promotion or how things are going, but I, I know you're not doing what you were doing before. And, and for anybody listening, Renee's out in uh, San Antonio, Texas, and his his email pops up every now and then. You can reach out to Renee. He's an awesome guy. He wants he wants to help people. He loves to to connect and network with folks. So if anything he says in this episode or the other one resonates, be sure to reach out. And you're just looking good, Renee. That's all I can tell you. You look like <laughs> you look like you done. Uh, Sharpen up a little bit since I saw you. <laughs> thank you, Mac. I have, I really have, and and um, uh, I thank you for for noticing that because I I'm gonna say it every time, man. Like I um, I'm grateful, man. I'm really grateful that I met you and that you took the time to talk to me because you know I wasn't, I was definitely not in a suicidal moment for sure, but I was just kind of at like a. I don't know, like a standstill almost. Maybe I felt stuck. I felt like cool. Like, yeah, uh, I felt content and I felt um, just, I don't know, just stuck. And I, I felt I had this awareness to me that like there's there's something more like, yeah, I'm happy. I am happy for sure. But I know I know I have so much more in the tank, but I don't know what to do with it. And I'm just kind of going through the motions. I was just kind of going through the motions. Uh, right, right around the time before I met you, and then when I when you talked to me on the phone, when I when I sent you that text message, uh, and and uh, it's crazy because you you reached out to me, you got back to me quick, really fast, and I I sent that text message with no expectations. Actually, I was expecting you to just kind of blow me off, <laughs> like like who's this guy texting me? <laughs> I I don't have a crazy social media presence or any you know, crazy, you know, I, I'm pretty just to myself, especially even more so back then. And you still responded to me. So thank you, Maggie. You're awesome. 
And that interaction from there, and you talked to me on the phone, bro. It was like two and a half hours. Um, and that was that was it, man. That was like the key in the ignition, dude. It has been way up, and I've been with my foot on the gas ever since. Oh, I dropped my light. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Let me get that. Fix it up, man. I knew there was gonna be some excitement. I knew when you started talking, I started I start sweating. <laughs> oh yeah. See. That's uh, that's the enthusiasm, right? That there. was perfect. I love it. <laughs> Keep that in there. <laughs> yeah, man, we ain't dropping that out. That's too good. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it it really um, you you started you rekindled my fire. Um, you reminded me that that the cards are in, are in my hand, um, and I just got to play the right cards. Like uh, I like a quote I heard the other day by Ray Charles. He says. Uh, the notes are right there under your fingers. You just gotta play. You gotta take the time to play the right notes. Oh yeah. So you reminded me of that, um, and I was like, yes, it's it's time to get to work. Uh, it's time to get to work, and I and I've been hustling ever since. So I guess I'll start with um, my first. I got promoted, technically two times. Wow. So I got I got in eight months. So that's that's amazing. I've been steadily getting promoted every year to year and a half. Um, since my career uh, started at San Antonio Water System, man, I think it was like seven years ago. And every year I got a promotion, um, wow. but never twice in in eight months. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, hey, when you become in, when you become seriously intentional, uh, mm -hmm. serious things start to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the power of blue collar leadership. Because <laughs> okay. I read all three of your books. Like, well, you have more than three, but I read three of your books like back to back. And started just applying that stuff. Yeah, uh, and, yeah, that's uh, phenomenal. So, so real quick, just let everybody know we're going to talk about since you you ready to go down that road. We'll talk about what's changed professionally for you since we talked, and then we'll go into the personal side of it, which we touched on a little already. But talk talk to me about these promotions and and what you got going on, where you were, and what you're doing now, and I guess what you've done these last couple times, mm -hmm. couple jobs. Okay, so where I was when I first talked to you. I was uh, a construction management inspector uh, for our capital improvement uh, projects. Yeah. And um, I had just got that job. I've been in that job for maybe about six months at the time. Um, and I was in that little zone where you start to get comfortable, where in that first month or two, everything's new and fresh and exciting. And then you kind of get the, get the hang of it. Uh, and then you kind of now it's like you now it's like kind of like the ball's back in your court. OK, so like now you got the hang of it. <laughs> are you going to stay on B team? Or are you going to go to A team? And I was in that B team mindset at that time. Like I'm going to I'm doing enough. Uh, I'm doing a little bit more than enough. And that's good enough. That's good enough for me. I wasn't doing I wasn't behaving to my potential. I was just doing what was needed and just a little bit more than what was needed, but not to my full potential. Yeah. Um, so that's where I was. Uh, and then I had that conversation with you and I started reading blue collar leadership books um, and applying all that stuff. And then I started doing much more. Um, and right around that time, I was super hungry and I still am. Um, I was very hungry for leadership. Um, I've always had it in my, my mind and my soul that I want I want to become the leader that I wish I had. Um, and I knew that if you if I'm seeing or for anybody, if you're ever seeing a lack in leadership or like, you know, oh, it's easy to just say, oh, leadership sucks or management sucks. It's easy to say that. But if that's the case, then it's up to you. It's up to you to be the leader you want to be. That's right. Then, then you need to get in that position. And you reminded me of that as well. Um, and I was like, okay, let's get to work. I'm I, that's my goal is to, to let's figure out what that means, right? Let's exactly, figure, do it and figure out what in the world was how do I do that where I'm at? That's what you mm -hmm. were taking those books and using that content and just pulling out the, the little principles and figuring out how to implement them and see what happens, right? That's what you're talking about. That's right, that's exactly right. And let's identify what's lacking, what exactly is lacking, and let's let's get that, let's get that in writing, let's write it down so I can see it get that in writing and do that. Um, so at that time, and it was 
try not to get super far in the weeds on the details, but essentially there was a, a lack of a system in place to get the results that we wanted to get. It was kind of like, it was like, um, maybe there was a lot of kind of like understandings that we had between um, us and the contractors. Yeah. And there wasn't a lot of writing and there wasn't a, a formal process in place okay. for this particular set of inspections. So you didn't have standard procedures, standard work. And exactly. I mean, everybody's kind of, everybody kind of knew, but they probably did some things different and some things needed to be exactly the same type of stuff. So you didn't have like a formal procedure in place. That's right. That's right. And we didn't have a formal procedure in place. And historically we were relying on um, inspectors with years and decades of experience Travel knowledge. <laughs> right, right. And, and we were relying on that uh, and their relationships and their tight bonds with the contractors um, to get things done. And it was working for for however long, right? And so the, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. <laughs> but, you know, um, some some folks, they can take advantage of that. That leaves us, that leaves a little gap where it leaves the door open for, well, if those folks that have decades of experience retire or if they're gone or whatever. And the new guys step in, they don't have those decades of experience and they yeah. don't have those strong knit bonds with the contractor. So it's all new and fresh. And then they have the, the, the youngsters that are coming in, they have nothing to fight with. They don't, they're going to war with no rifle because they don't have an SOP or anything to follow. Um, and they don't have those decades of experience. Um, so it's, we, we, that was, that was, was lacking. And I, I decided, well, if it's, if there ain't one, well, who better to make one than the guy doing the work? And that was That's me. Right. Um, so I got that in writing and we, uh, it was a team effort because I got it. I got a, it was a partnership between me and another inspector. And, uh, we, we had, we set up like weekly meetings to, to see, to talk about what's working, what's not working. What do we, what do we think uh, could be better? Yeah, man. What, what are the struggles that we don't have the answer to? And then we set up a weekly meeting with our superintendent and we, we brought that to the table prepared in writing with, with an agenda of what we're going to talk about. Uh, and then he was able to answer our questions. And there was a, we found that all three of us our our superintendent and the inspectors were like, Whoa, like, that that's that was happening or like what why are y'all doing that uh or wow you're doing that and that works cool keep doing that Th there was a lot of discovery when all parties came to the table yeah and then that expanded to our manager and that expanded to the contractor and we just got we got you and then we ended up expanding to um the other uh because this was kind of like a, a joint bid type of project where it's like the, the uh, San Antonio water system and then city of San Antonio. Yep. And then we expanded to them where we brought them to the table and yep. then we really got solid on what the process is going to be like. And what, what are, what are we, agreeing? we just got clear about our expectations. What were they, what were they expecting of us from SAWS inspections and what we're expecting from them, uh, yep. from the contractors and the uh, city of San Antonio. And we all, it was, it was like a big happy family. For Absolutely. about that's a whole year after that, yeah, and yeah, then super good, man. That's really that's really some lean components. What you did, you know, from my background in lean, that's I mean, that's what you did. You you slowed down to go fast, right? And absolutely, and, and you implemented what we call in lean standard work. And when you implement that standard work, and there's not any exactly what you just said is what happens. People now we have to start communicating, and you just started it out. You said, this is what I see. And then you started talking, well, I see it like this, or I don't do that. I do this. And then you talk and figure out what's the best way to do it. And then you started getting your clients involved and the contractors and what do they want? That's voice of the customer relative to lean is we want to listen to in a lean world, voice of the customer. That's what we want to, we want to do what the customer wants us to do in the way that the best way that we can do what they want done. Right. And so now mm -hmm. you start that's that's it's really some lean principles you you put in there. I don't remember. I don't think you studied lean a lot, right? No, nope, not only from what my brothers told me about, but I've never but, read any books on that or anything. It's common sense. That's what lean is. And <laughs> if, if you're a, if you're a leader, you naturally 
do lean things without knowing they're lean. If you're a good lean person, you naturally do leadership things without, even if you haven't studied leadership. So that's, that's phenomenal, man. And, and so you just took charge to say, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And it reminds me of the story. I, I know you remember reading it in my book where, where I took over that machine sale that was struggling. And, you know, I started a spreadsheet and I started documenting all the times and started chasing the bottlenecks, meaning trying to reduce the cycle times. And we doubled output, you know, and my job got better. All three shifts jobs got better. Supervisor's jobs got better. Engineering's jobs got better and easier. That That's what you did, right? Eliminated a lot of problems, eliminated a lot of frustration. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think what was super important is like, you don't have to have all the answers um, when you start out for that, you you discover the answers That's right. as they as you just find out and see in front of you and document what's actually happening. Then that's like the, when the answers start coming to you, like, oh, wow, you know, I had no idea. And then we got we start bringing people to the table and then solutions start happening. So the magic go. happens. Maybe yeah. what happens when somebody wants to lead it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, and that's I want to really cool. share real quick with anybody listening, Renee, because I tell people. You know, if, if you won't lead without a position, you're not going to lead with a position. A lot of people want to wait till they get the position to lead. But if you're a leader, you, you understand it ain't got nothing to do with the position. You just start leading from wherever you are. And now you fully understand that, right? You you bought into what I was selling and you you tried it. But see, now you know what I know. Can't nobody tell me, no, this stuff don't work. No, they're just going to use you and abuse you. They may use you and abuse you, but if you stay, you're not leading yourself well. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly you do the work and then if nobody appreciate it you go do the work somewhere else where somebody appreciate it but most of the time where you are is going to appreciate it because they're yes. just waiting on you to show up and lead mm -hmm. i i can't tell you i've had countless conversations like that man like where you're talking to people and you're 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 explaining like i'm trying to tell them i'm trying to share with them that we the cards in our hands like we have so much more influence over our situations than than yeah. what they tell us or like you know what's kind of common sense i guess but we have so much more influence than 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 we think initially um and we can do something about this and it, yes it's going to require a little bit more time and effort but it's going to pay out the the results are going to be double or you know even more like uh that I think I, I read it in uh, Seven Habits. I finally finished reading Seven Habits, okay. and it was like that. One plus one equals three or more. That's right. Synergy. That synergy. There you go. Is the synergy. Yep. With the synergy, we we can double, triple, you know, whatever, quadruple our results if we just put a little bit of time and effort into it. Some TLC. And you saw that it. too. I mean, you mm -hmm. saw. Uh, you, see, now you're now you're you're really getting to a higher level because you're able to recall these principles. You, you're able to see them in action. You're able to go back and tie these principles to your stories, real life stories where you accomplished it. So, so what did all that, what, what happened after that? You guys got good, good. The process got better. Everybody got aligned. Now, also now this is another reason standard work and formal processes are so important because now if somebody leaves and you bring somebody new in, now you got a training document. You can get them right up to speed. This is how we do things around here. Instead of everybody got to take their own notes, and figure out their own way and hope they're doing it right. So, so you got, there's a lot of win in there, right? That's habit four, win, win. Everybody wins. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you did all the seven habits right there. If you think about it, you was proactive. You begin with the end in mind. You put first things first. You just described all that. You went yeah. for win, win. You did habit five, seek first to understand, which was understand the process, understand the people. You just laid all that out a minute ago. And, and like you just said, you recapped with, with synergy. And that's what happens when you do all those first five habits, you get synergy and, and and then you said earlier, you still in sponge mode. You still growing. That's habit seven. Sharpen the saw. Sharpen the saw. Yeah. You you laid them all out right there. Dr. Covey slayed the dragon on on that book. Oh yeah, that was such a good one. That was a really good book. Um, I just finished it like last week. <laughs> so yeah, it's a big thick one. Make your head hurt. <laughs> oh, Most yeah. people don't want to read that book. So <laughs> I got all those same principles in my book. I just don't call them the seven habits and lay it out the framework. But once you understand that framework. It's in every book that, that's got anything meaningful in it. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. That book is a tall glass of water for sure, for so, sure. So that got you uh, some opportunity, got you some visibility. Yes. Uh, so that's when the, the visibility came up. And um, I, 
with the there was a lot of focus on it was and it was simple too. It was a shared Excel file workbook um on our shared drive at our at our job and it was just tracking. It was just tracking when the the invoices were coming in, how long are we taking to send it back out? What's the current status of this job? Uh, who's the contractor? What's the address? Are there any issues? A comment box, you know, and that was it. And it was live where all of our folks can add to it as they inspect. Um, so, you know, if there was ever an issue or anything like that, we could we can pick up right back where we left off, um, and we can see what's what's incoming, what's pending, what we what have we not made sight on, you know, all those kind of factors and indicators that before were invisible to us it was just kind of up to the inspector to like remember all that at, or you know at least take it up to himself to document those things on his own but now everybody can see it and and um we were kind of siloed i think before where you know person a was inspector a had was dealing with his fires and his things and while inspector b is on the other side of town and if Inspector A goes on a vacation for two months and he, you know, we don't know what Inspector A did or what he's done, where he's at. And we don't know any of that. Um, there was it was kind of siloed like that. And with this shared file, that was an answer to that issue where we, we don't know where we're at. Now we know where we're at everywhere in all the whole town at all times. Yeah, that's um, that's another lean deal. right? It's called a uh, visual workplace. Right. That's that's the component. You made yeah. everything visual. And that's another thing with lean is. Try to make everything visual, everything, much as possible, that everybody can just instantly see what's going on and understand it. Make it simple. That sounds like what you did again, right? You're starting to apply these leadership principles and, and lean principles and this kind of results you get. Oh, that's why I never heard of that one. So oh, very yeah. cool. Very cool. So uh, but back to the, the visibility. So, yeah. So there, there was focus on that. Uh, our director, I don't, I don't know how he he found out about it but our director got wind of that um and then that was the when the conversation of a, a new job opportunity for a new position that promotion um the construction specialist job um, okay that director probably said who did this <laughs> <laughs> that's probably what they said even if they didn't say it out loud they probably like who, who did this how, how did this happen why did this happen and i need to know i need to know what's going on <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Uh, I, that's a. That, I'm glad you said that because now I'm curious. Like, I, I want to ask him, like, hey, how did you even know about that, and what exactly did you like about it, so we can do more of that. Um, so uh, that's, that's probably like that you took initiative. That's what he liked. Somebody took initiative and made things better without being told. Mm, okay. Okay. I don't know that, but that, that that's well, we're gonna find out. <laughs> I'm gonna find out and I'll write it down and we'll bring it next chat. <laughs> okay, yeah, man. you keep growing and we don't just you you might be on here like a hundred times before we go. Uh but yeah, so the visibility came out and uh uh my it went down to my manager and he was he was telling me like hey um we got this idea of out of a, of a, a new position. Um we need to figure it out with HR first. Uh but in the meantime we suggest that you go for the senior inspector job. Um, and, and I was like, okay. Uh, so, because I, I just had recently got the licenses to do, to be qualified to be that. Yeah. I was like, okay, great. I'll, I'll do that. Well, right in, right in that time frame, I had already applied for the foreman's position in our maintenance group. Um, so before I had that conversation, I had already applied for a different job because I was hungry for leadership. Yeah. I loved where I was at and everything was running smoothly. But I was like, in my brain, I was like, well, um, everything's running smoothly. I mean, they don't really need me anymore. We're, we're, we're good to go. Like I can I can leave in peace and the next guy can fill in seamlessly. Um, so I'm, I guess let's go take my services elsewhere. <laughs> and uh, I applied. and. So that was on the the burner, the back burner with with uh, the idea of the construction specialist job. It wasn't set in stone yet. Um, and then I, I applied for the foreman's job, which also I just put the application. So kind of two things floating around at the same time. You trying to get well, two jobs. You, you, you're really serious. <laughs> well, uh, 
it, it just so happened right literally on the same day on wow. the same day that i find i found out from my management that the construction specialist job was kind of official um like we're really we're really serious about this we you can do this uh the foreman job called me for the interview <laughs> I was like, oh man! On the same day, you got two jobs. <laughs> on the same days, <laughs> like, oh man! But that my my leadership is awesome because they're like, hey, we suggest you interview. We don't want to rob you of your interview experience. We suggest you interview while you're making your decision. So that was awesome that they. Yeah, uh, that's great. That's good leadership. That is great lead. I really appreciated that, and it all worked out because in the end, um, I interviewed, and actually, I didn't get the the job. Um, so my decision was easy because <laughs> I, I went over there. That's pretty easy. <laughs> I'll take but, the one I, I got a chance for. <laughs> right, right. And I'm so glad it, it all worked out. Uh, I, I got to give credit to God for that one for sure, because it's this position has been so fruitful and I've just grown so much. And I'm I'm really out of my comfort zone here. I'm, I wasn't familiar with what I'm doing right now. Um, as opposed to the foreman side, uh, I've kind of I've I had more experience in the maintenance side of, of our um, pipelines yeah. work. Uh, so it wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily be out of my comfort zone too much. Um, where, what I'm doing now is way out of my comfort zone. So, yeah. So, yeah, I, I ended up taking that job and here we are. OK, so you mentioned you had two promotions since mm -hmm. since since we talked so that did you just tell me two or just one? Oh yeah so so first it was the senior inspector so i okay. forgot to mention that i did forget to mention that okay. so i got the i got the senior inspector job and okay. then uh i think it was like a month and a half or two months later that's when the construction specialist job got it uh, okay was, okay was i wasn't job. i wasn't tracking just right I, I it was two stories in one i got you. yeah i i crammed them together but yeah, man. Yeah, that's always the two promotions. Yep, and you got your side business still going. Yes. Mm -hmm. How's that so, going? It's going good. It's going. It's going pretty good. Uh, uh I'm learning um, more about the the script that I use and making fancier stuff, man, fancier content. I'm making my own content now. Yeah. So uh, super good. I got a um, payment structure set settled, and I'm gonna have my LLC today. So. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're we're making moves. <laughs> so you you tearing it up. So you tearing it up in your in your side hustle, which by one day who knows might become the main hustle. You don't ever know when you're you growing. You don't know. ever know. You just grow and things happen, and you figure out which way you want to go and what you want to do. So congratulations on all that, man. And Thank I you. mean, you're you're a great model. I mean, you're a great model of growth and and perseverance and resilience. When when I had you on the first time and. And now you've been reading the blue collar leadership books. I think you read the front lines book, the teamwork book and the supervision book, right? Yeah. And the 30 principles book. Yeah. That's, that's 30 traits. That's the teamwork. 30 book. Traits. Oh, it's yep. a teamwork 30, book. Yeah, 30, that's right. 30, 30 traits of high impact team players. That's the subtitle of the blue collar leadership and teamwork, that yellow and black stripe book. Right. Mm -hmm. And did you say uh, leading from the front lines? Did you, yep. did you that, that's know? the blue, blue book. Look like okay. blue jeans. Uh huh. Yeah. And then the, that building the team one uh that might have um, been the culture book uh, that's right leadership and culture it looks like uh -huh. carbon fiber got the puzzles those that's are right. the three you read yes okay so you didn't read the supervision book uh i mean i got the list on my phone exactly i i don't remember okay. exactly all the titles <laughs> okay. but you read a lot and you're still reading you're reading ria's book now i think or listening. yes yes uh bridges from the past right yeah bridges out of the past yep yeah 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 yeah, bridges out of the past a, a survivor's lessons on resilience so that's that's a good transition and anybody wants to check that out ria's uh download you can go right there that's on the screen if you're if you're watching you can see it if you're listening on the podcast it's ria r-i-a story s-t-o-r-y dot com forward slash download and uh your your website i'm gonna say it i forgot to mention i forget that people are listening not just watching because we record <laughs> on video and put the video on the youtube channel but it's it's your business website is Daron Style D U R O N S T Y L E dot com, and that's where you can reach out and in your email. If Rio pop that up where I can see it, I'll pop your email up. It's Renee Daron at Daron Style dot com. So R E N E dot D U R O N at Daron Style dot com. 
So yeah, when we talk about resilience and I, I don't know if you just happen to pull that shirt out of the closet you got on. People can't, what's it say? Restored, Restored changed, changed and joyful. joyful. Okay. That's right. I, I didn't know if you pulled that out just by accident or that happened to be the one that you wanted to pull out for this show today. So if people are watching, they can see it. If, if you're listening, <laughs> I had to read it to you. So, <laughs> tell me about this resilience and your personal side, because I know you did something really cool and you told me, I don't want to get back on your show until that's over with. So t- <laughs> tell me about this. Yes. Okay. So I, I almost forgot about that. <laughs> I know. Okay. I was like, he got to stop so I can get some, get some of this personal side in. <laughs> yes. Okay. So uh, I recently embarked on what's cons- what's called a, a misogi, and uh, misogi is like a an ancient Shinto Japanese practice. Uh, and the the word misogi it means water cleansing or purification, and it's like a it's like a samurai tradition where they cleanse the mind, body, and spirit uh, by immersing themselves in cold water or a waterfall. Um, and you know, I found out about that book, or found out about that practice in the book uh, "The Comfort Crisis" by okay. Michael Easter. A super good book about, in a nutshell, explaining the importance and the benefits of being uncomfortable. Um, And we have the state of the world is kind of the way it is because of our increased comfort and uh, people's uh, obsession with being more comfortable. Um, And it's you're not you're not playing with your full potential if you're you're comfortable all the time um so essentially the misogi challenge now what what that means is uh today for for anybody now um is you sign up or you do you embark on some kind of physically and mentally tough challenge um and it needs to be so tough that you don't think you can do it at the time you commit to it if oh, you yeah. think you can do it, if you're like, yeah, I, I got this. I've done this before. It doesn't count. It has to be uncomfortable. Uh, you have to. In the book, he mentions it needs to be a 50 percent uh, success rate or not or less. So if, if you you know, you need to be like, man, if I flip a coin heads, I do it. Tails, I can't do it. I can do it or can't do it. I don't know. I, I have no idea. And so what I did is I signed once I, immediately after finishing the book. Real, real uh, quick before you before you say that, Renee, did, did you hit the gas again and move your light? Oh, I did. <laughs> I gotta have the I gotta have the light on you. You keep hitting the gas down there, light goes off. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I want people to see you when you're telling this story, man. So I had to interrupt you. But why I got you interrupted? Something you said a minute ago in sure. my book, Defining Influence. Uh the subtitles increasing your influence, increases your options. There's a quote in there I share quite often. I share it a lot, but it come out of that book. It's uh, I, I say in there too often, too often in life, pe- people who are searching find what they'll settle for and stop looking for what they were searching for. And that's what you were describing earlier when you were in your job, right? You had settled on the job and the life and everything was okay and good, but you were stuck, you said. And, and then you just described, you're describing that now when you're talking about that book that you know too often in life people who are searching find what they'll settle for stop looking for what they were searching for so 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 you got to do this thing that's 50 percent chance of you not making it so now we got the light back on you you shining bright over there looking good again all right now that you can see me now you can hear me yeah, so, oh, uh, you know it's dying but that's okay you you hit the gas man i'm telling you well it's just it's just it's just losing battery that's what it is oh is that what it is? Right. i got i got the charger right here so it's all right a second that's why we like these podcasts be authentic man You're just uh-huh. real people real people that's right we ain't no fancy studio we just make stuff happen it ain't about all that anyway it's about the message that's part that matters mm-hmm. and that's yeah, right you look good again man you look fresh <laughs> fresh again <laughs> all right so you, take take five <laughs> yeah so you came up with your challenge yes okay so i came up with the challenge uh actually what i was gonna do so i was like misogi right i, I need to do this i want to commit to something really hard uh, what are we doing? Um, and I, uh, I was talking to Adam Hoots actually, and he's been on your show. Yeah. And, uh, I was telling him about that and I was like, I think I'm going to sign up for a marathon. 
because up until that point in my life, um, I was I've only ever run 10 miles uh, and that wasn't for like a uh, a 13 K or it wasn't for any kind of formal race. I just did it on my own just to see like what I got. And yeah. I, I got 10 miles. Um, and uh, I told him, I was like, I think I'll sign up for a marathon. And he, he told me, he's like, nah, that's too easy for you, dude. <laughs> that's too easy. And uh, he didn't, he didn't say, he didn't mention to sign up for a, an ultra marathon. But he did tell me that that's too easy. I was like, oh, okay, all right. Thank you for thank you for holding me accountable. Let me <laughs> let me think on that. Let me chew on that some more. Uh, and then I ended up talking to my other buddy Brad Coleman, and uh, we were talking about that. And he's like, "Have you ever done a Spartan?" And I was like, "No, uh, I never. I've heard of one, but I've never done one." He's like, "What do you think about that?" And I looked into. It. He sent me. He sent me the link. That's right. He texted me the link to the Spartan um, uh, website. So I was looking up the races and I was like, okay, cool. Let's do a Spartan. And I wanted to do one now, like as soon as I could. Um, that was over. That was at least a marathon, at least. Um, and I was looking <laughs> and the most recent one that with that long, cause they had other ones, but they were like the 13 K or the, the shorter ones. I don't, I don't know exactly the length, but they were shorter than 26 miles. Um, and and uh, the the most the the race that was closest to my date of commission, like I'm, I'm committing, <laughs> it was the Spartan Ultra in <laughs> Dallas, and that's a uh, 32 miles uh, with 60 <laughs> obstacles. <laughs> and and like man, like you know, you see the if you see the picture of me and when I, I finished the race and everything, you, you know. I guess it may it may look to me like you, yeah. Of course that guy did that. Like yeah, of course he did that. There but when is. I, <laughs> yeah. See, okay, there he is. There he is. Uh, you, you're looking fresh, Dur uh, Renee. I was thinking, <laughs> well, maybe maybe he didn't run it. He just kind of walked over and took a picture. You don't <laughs> you don't you don't look like you just finished 32 miles and 60 obstacles. obstacles. Oh yeah, dude. If you see those shoes right there, <laughs> dude, I was smoked. I, was, I did zoom in. I saw a little blood on your knees and stuff like that going on. <laughs> yeah, my hands all jacked up, and, and I'm just putting on a smile, but I'm really crying. <laughs> thirty-two and, miles, man. So tell us about that. You decided to do it, and yes. it's thirty-two miles and sixty obstacles. Mm -hmm. So when I signed up, I was like, oh, I think it was like two hundred and twenty pounds. It's been the heaviest I've ever been in my life. Um, and and I was I was happy. Like I wasn't um depressed or anything like that i just i was just focusing on other things and i just didn't i kind of put the my health on the on the back burner but uh i was not looking like that <laughs> when i signed up and so it was really scary for me uh but i i did train and cut some pounds and and uh now it's game day which was october uh 19th october 19th was the day and just a couple weeks ago yeah just a couple weeks ago and uh, we get there and um, we run it, we're running away. And that, that trail, I was just, man, I thought I was prepared because I had met another guy. Um, uh, shout out Chris. I met him at crunch fitness gym and uh, he kind of like, was like my guide almost like he, he ran with me. I met him in the sauna and, uh, okay. <laughs> and like, he saw me rolling my, my foot with this little orthopedic wall and, and we started talking like that, and and then uh, we we was like, oh well, he was like, I'll I'll train with you, and I was like, yeah, man. So we started running and stuff, and about a month before the race, uh, I ran thirty miles for the first time ever. Wow. Yeah, and uh, but it was a nice paved flat surface, and there was there was a few hills, but man, it was nothing like the Spartan that. <laughs> That track was treacherous. It was horrendous. Those the terrain was just rocky, uneven. There was cactus in the trail. There was like aloe vera plants, like just thorns and sharpness all over the place. And you're going in like the forest, and it's like it's like the Texas Hill Country, and it it's dry. But like when you get there, it's like I don't know if it was mesquite or something, but it was just the scratchiest 
little shrubs all over the place, just scraping you all over the place. And and then if you look at the the elevation chart, it looks like an EKG. It's just <laughs> going up and down. Um, and um, uh, it was it was really tough. And and I found I discovered a new injury or like a new pain in my knees that I didn't experience before. Uh, at no point in my training did I have knee pain. And it just decided to show up on mile five. Wow. Yeah, it started hurting me. I was like, oh, my goodness. I hope this goes away. I hope I'm just getting warmed up or what. But nope, every mile just compounded a little bit more, a little bit more. And it finally made it made me stop to like a, a walk run where I would run until the pain got unbearable. And then I would walk a little bit and then run. And you had to do that kind of thing. And it so was kid. Was, was there like? Was it basically every half mile was an obstacle? Was it kind of evened out like that? So you run a little while, you do an obstacle, you run a little while. Was it fairly even mm. obstacles? Yeah, so not necessarily. So there'd be like a cluster of obstacles. Okay. And it'll be like like the first, I would say you, you ran like three quarters of a mile, and then it was like kind of obstacles back to back. Like you had to jump over this six-foot wall, and then it was an eight-foot wall, and then a 10-foot wall, and then, you know, all these little kind of, climbing they all involve some kind of grip strength or climbing um, and your knee was hurting <clears throat> yeah well those for the ones i just described i was good i was fresh out the out the starting line okay. but uh, my knee was hurting later i was a uh, mile five and that's then you get so it's a cluster right and then you run for a, a, long, a good while like there's no obstacles for a while and it's kind of sporadic with, with the way they have their obstacles Okay. Uh, so it really wasn't consistent. It's kind of just random almost. It's like a little cluster here and then one here and then, you know, another little cluster and then all all the way up until 60 obstacles. You end up doing 60 of them. <laughs> Are they yeah. numbered? Huh? Are they numbered so you know like how many obstacles you got left? Oh, no. No, no they're not. <laughs> you just got to go. <laughs> yeah. And after like mile 20, you don't care anymore. <laughs> Whatever. What's next? <laughs> yeah, that's that was my strategy going in i was like i'm gonna count the obstacles so i know where i'm going <laughs> and like dude like i don't know after like the 10th one i was like man i i lost track i don't even, go <laughs> let me just get through this man <laughs> yeah and uh you you were having flashbacks of a uh, boot camp wasn't you in the marines oh yeah absolutely like uh especially there's a sandbag carry and a bucket carry and it, it reminded me of like carrying a pack and and then the terrain is like that. Like when you're climbing the Reaper, it was just like that. Uh, like the rockiness and the the all the uneven ground. The terrain the terrain was just like that. Like yeah, you went to San Diego. That? You're talking about the That's Reaper. Right. That, yeah, I don't know about that. I was at Paris Island, but a lot of people do. A lot of Marines know about it. That okay. everybody everybody west of the Mississippi went went to San Diego, and I think everybody east goes to Paris Island. So so you were it brought back. Did you actually? Think about it though while you were running or you didn't even think about it. I did. I did. Uh it was it was a helpful it was like I don't know, like spiritual fuel for me or something. Like, hey, you like, you've done I did this. that, I can do this. <laughs> exactly. Like you this ain't nothing new. Like you you just need to find it again. Um yeah. and that was another reason why I did this is uh because I, I felt like I had lost that side of me like that that grit that grit was just fading for me i guess because i was getting so comfortable um and it, it i was like you gotta find it man you have this you got what it takes you just need to find it again um and so yeah it made me think about that a lot uh it, it gave me strength it, it helped me to dig deep and remember those things and uh yeah so that we're doing that and you know the train is what it is how i described it but uh i actually lost my shoes uh, I lost my shoes in the race, and imagine the 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 terrain is really bad, rocky, and there's cactus and stuff. And I failed an obstacle, and uh, every time you failed an obstacle, you have to do a penalty lap, and there's like a little taped off area where you got to go and do a little maze and come back. Yeah. Um, and that particular obstacle that I failed, and the penalty lap involved it, this huge like mud pit and uh and i i was like man all right i gotta get it so i'm going over there and i'm walking in and i'm walking i'm walking in and it's it's pretty deep and then i take the next step and like i my foot must have went in like 
a foot and a half, maybe two feet deep of of mud. And I'm like, oh man. And this was a, this was the second lap. So okay, so another thing about that Spartan Ultra, it's two laps, two 15 mile laps. So oh, okay. once yeah, so once you did the whole first 15 <laughs> then miles, then you know what's coming after that. <laughs> exactly, you know exactly what's coming. <laughs> yeah, and that made it much worse because I got stuck in I did that, I nailed that obstacle the first time, but the second I, I was so gassed already, I just couldn't do it, man. I just I didn't have the grip strength to hold on to that rope. Yeah. Uh, and uh I had to fail. And so I went over there, I'm stuck in the mud, it's mile 20, and I'm cramping. And like I know myself, I experienced this in the training uh, leading up to this, that when I cramp in my quads and I go full cramp mode, it, it, you're toast. I'm toast. Like I'm going to cramp and then I'm going to be walking cramp, walking cramp. And it just kind of you're toast. So I didn't I was like, dude, I can't. I was struggling to get my foot out of the mud. And while I'm struggling in the mud stuck, my quads are like it's doing that little. Oh. Oh, like you know, you're about to cramp, but you're not all full cramp mode. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I was doing that, and I was like, man. And I ended up getting a good enough cramp where I fell, and I just kind of my since my both my feet are stuck now, I just fall on my butt, <laughs> and my feet still are in the mud. I'm like, oh man. I was like, I can't, I can't get these out. And then another thing too, um, I wasn't exactly, you know running as fast as i could throughout this race so there's cutoff time so if you don't make it to the next obstacle at a certain time they'll you oh, gotta yeah. go so uh th- i don't know what hour it was but it was uh pretty late and i was like man i i can't afford to stay here that long i need to i need to go and i was like ah, i just i tried to dig out my shoes with my hands and it, it was just too much so me trying to avoid the cramp I took I just took my feet out of the shoes so I don't have to struggle with my legs I, and I tried to find them I just couldn't find them man and I I, I was like man dude I got I got to go so I took out my feet and I just started walking and at that point I was I was defeated I was defeated in my head I was like there is no way I'm going to finish this race with no shoes it's a, there's no way it's impossible because I knew what was coming and it was like a dried creek bed yeah. And it had like these slate rocks and like there it was like terracotta uh a material almost so like it's it's sharp and it's yeah. crumbly and I'm I'm like man if if I go there's no point in going over there and tearing up my feet permanently and then I can never try again. I'm not I'm not gonna do that. I'm out of here. So I just got out and I was like, man, maybe I'll find somebody and tell them to call a volunteer to come rescue me or something and i was i was feeling sorry for myself i was depressed and i was like man like I, i'm gonna have to tell everybody i i backed out i'm oh it was miserable but then i just kept walking i just like i'm just, just gonna walk just i don't know what i don't have a plan i don't see no way out of this i'm just gonna keep walking i don't know and i'm walking and i'm walking and then some guy comes up behind me another racer and he's like, "Hey, man, uh, how how are you? <laughs> you all right?" And I was like, "No, I'm not all right. I'm not all right." <laughs> and he's like, "Where's your shoes, bro?" <laughs> and I like, I lost them in the mud. He's like, "Oh man, do you have extra shoes?" I'm like, "No, I don't." And he says, "Well, I have I have a extra pair of shoes in the transition area. Um, what size are you?" And told him eleven. And he said, "Uh, well, I have ten and a half." And he's like, they're kind of tied, and I don't know, they're caked in mud. And I was like, dude, any shoes are better than no shoes. <laughs> he's like, okay. And he's like, all right, well, um, I'll stick with you, and let's see if we if we can just make it to the next aid station. It's about three quarters of a mile away. If we can make it to the next aid station, uh, maybe we can ask the volunteer to go to go get it for us and bring it to you. It's like, okay. So he walks with me, and sure enough, we get to the next little aid station, and uh, the volunteers there, and and we're we're telling him like, hey, the situation. I lost my shoes. Oh, uh, we're coming up to that cr- dry creek bed. I can't walk in there. Like, uh, I is there any way you can go get those shoes or call somebody to come bring them? And he's like, well, you know, there was three hundred and like fifty racers that day, and we all have five gallon buckets with stuff you can leave at the. Um, the transition area yeah. so it's like 
how is he gonna find it? And he is he, <laughs> you know, we had that conversation. Like, how am I gonna find that amongst 300 buckets? How are we gonna find that one with your size of shoes? <laughs> Come on, man. And he's like, I- I'll try, I'll try. And he he calls and he get he gets on the radio and he tells them the situation. And then the the medic or I don't know who he called, but they said stand by. So we're there standing by, and um, it must have been like 10 minutes past, and this is when the miracle happened. Oh, also, too, all along the way, I was praying to God, please, God, let me finish the race. Please, just let me finish the race. Please, please, begging him, please, God, let me finish the race. And um, and sure enough, this when the miracle happened. We were waiting about 10 minutes, and the volunteer takes off his shoes. Wow. Yeah, he took off his shoes, and he's like, finish your race, man. I'm like, are you serious, dude? He said, yeah, finish your race. You're going to be waiting here for about 45 minutes. It's already whatever time. And um, you, yeah, just finish your race. I was like, oh, my God. Thank you so much. So his name was Lance. Shout out Lance with yeah, the yeah. Spartan is Ultra. Picture, is that a picture of Lance's shoes there? Yeah, that those are his shoes. <laughs> I still have them. So uh, <laughs> okay. I need to find this Lance and thank him, buy him some shoes. I, I, I give mean, him a new pair. You yeah, buy dude. <laughs> so. Man, and, and sure enough, he gave me, and that was the wind in my sails because wow, that's I, awesome I just started story. zooming after that. Mm-hmm. That's an awesome story. You knew you knew you, you were gonna finish. And look, I don't when I'm looking at you on the screen, it just looks awesome because on the screen it says Renee Duron restored. Period. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Amen to that. Yeah, because I, you know, before I didn't know all the rest of the words were on that shirt. I thought it just said restored was all that was on there. But yeah, man, I see that restored, changed, and joyful. But it goes so good with with your name tag right there, Renee Duron restored. <laughs> That's I, awesome. That is awesome. That is awesome. I don't so believe you finished, in it. So you finished the race? Yes, I finished the race barely. You fell over. <laughs> <laughs> I fell over that line. Uh, I, yeah, I finished the race, and uh, I was projecting to finish in eight hours because it took me about six and a half hours to do thirty miles. So I was like, yeah, give it, give or take some, because of the obstacles. Um, I was pretty strong and lean at the time, so I, I was like, the obstacles shouldn't be that hard. <laughs> I'm sadly mistaken, <laughs> and uh, it ended up taking me 12 hours wow (laughs) it took me 12 hours to finish that race (laughs) and uh yeah i mean uh, across the finish line i did the the extra mile so you once you i love the way they have it set up it's perfect so you the finish line is is there right but right like i want to say like i don't know maybe three yards before the finish line there's a little entrance and it takes you to the left, and it's called the extra mile, the extra mile. And then you 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 can choose to go there, and you'll get a little pin that goes with your medal. Uh, it says you went the extra mile. That you went the extra mile, and it's like a little taped off area, and you just I don't I don't know if it's a whole mile, but yeah, it feels like a mile. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it's called, and that's what it's named, right? Yeah, that's what it's called. The and, extra and in mile. your mind, when you're looking at it, you thinking it's a mile, whether it is or not, don't make exactly. it. <laughs> Dude, 32 miles in, you it's it's 10 miles. Might as well be 10 miles. And you <laughs> did it. You're so smoke. And I did it. I did it. I got that. I had to get that pin. <laughs> That's uh, awesome, so, man. Yeah. That's yeah, good it was stuff. good. I, I learned a lot about myself there. <clears throat> Congratulations. And you accomplished the mission. Yes, I did. I did. I had I started that race with the end in mind. And the end in mind was like, I'm going to finish this no matter what. And uh, I did that. It was just that. And you told me that way back when we did the other video. You said, because I said, I got to have you back, man. You said, I we, I come back after I finish that, that Spartan. I got to do that. And that's why it's only been a couple of weeks. As soon as you, as soon as you finished it, you reached out. And I, I had it in my calendar to reach out to you because I knew when it was. And, and you reached out to me before I got to you. And this was the first chance we had to, to get on here. And I didn't talk to you on purpose because I didn't want to. I wanted you to share it with me. You know, like it's the first time because it is the first time. I didn't even want to talk to you until we got on here. <laughs> yeah. So, man, I'm, yeah, I'm, man, I'm proud of you professionally and personally, man. That's that's. I mean, I can't get over the shirt right there. Renee Duron restored is what it says on the screen. So, a- anybody listening on the podcast, I encourage you to get on uh, the YouTube channel and look for this episode. It should be, I think, episode 32. Uh, 
with Renee and go back and watch his other one, man. You got you got anything else to go along with either one of those stories or just anything in general? We still got time. We can keep going if you got something mm-hmm. that, that you wanted to say you hadn't said yet. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I would say that it's like, uh, uh, I want to share like the learnings I, I found over there. Cause a lot of times, like I consistently hear this from people like who's, who've asked me about my race. Um, I put it on Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, and I shared, I shared my learnings and my takeaways from it. Um, but I don't necessarily go to people, Hey, I finished a Spartan. Like, Hey, I don't, I don't do that. If they, if they ask me, I tell them, or I have it on my desk, the the metal, um, and they'll ask me and I'll tell them, but, uh, consistently I hear like, Oh, they'll say F that that's too many miles or no way. I can't do that. They just count themselves out right away. Um, and then they'll say, why, why would you endure that? Why? And because of the learnings, like that in that, like the the Marine Corps saying, embrace the suck, right? In in the suck is where the growth is. Uh, those I, it was a. I feel like at that Spartan, in that mile twenty, where I was at the lowest of the low, and I lost my shoes, and I didn't see any hope, but I still chose to keep on going a little bit. Um, that taught me that like if you just persevere through through the valleys, um, the miracles can happen. Like that's where the miracle is. You just gotta keep on going. And um, that's that's like a perfect, beautiful summary of my life where I've been and it, I've been in these valleys, and the valleys are all self-imposed. It was the valley that I created in my mind. Um I, I believe that we ought not to compare pain to others, but I mean, let's let's get real. There people have much worse situations, but the pain the pain you experience is still real. But that being said, it's like what you do with that pain, and like it's you know this too shall pass. And um, it was a perfect, beautiful like reminder. Almost, I feel like this was like God giving me a reminder of like I'm with you. You just got to keep on going. You just got to keep on going. And like, that's where that miracle happened. I, I, that was a perfect opportunity to dip out of the race. Like, and people probably would have understood like, Hey, you lost your shoes. Yeah. The track is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You'll get it next time. But no, it, it's God said, you're not done. You're not finished. Here's some shoes. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I think that that right there is, in during these things, it's not it's not because we're crazy or people that do this stuff. Uh, at least I'll speak for myself. I think I do this stuff not to to flex or to I want to be cool or brag. It's not about that. It's, I'm learning about myself through these challenges. I'm reminding myself who I am and what I'm capable of. Um, and I, I would encourage others to try similar. It don't have to be a Spartan, but just push yourself and get uncomfortable and you'll find you'll discover new found powers and abilities that you have, too. So, yeah, that's what I want that's to outstanding, man. So what's next? What's next for you personally or professionally? What what's on your radar? What, yeah. What kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got going. Uh, so I would say personally, um, I started posting on TikTok. I'm making my own content now and I I just want to breathe wisdom out into the world that I think was super pivotal for me um that helped me get through a lot of hard times that give me gave me a new perspective and yep. reminders that uh your growth doesn't have to be linear where yep. This is step A, one, two, three, four. It's not always like that. Sometimes it's step one, two, three, four, and then you go back to step zero, negative 10, and you know, it's 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 not linear. Um, I want to breathe out some wisdom like that uh, to remind people of the learnings, uh, share with people the learnings that I've had that helped me get out, get out of funks and help me get ahead, um, help me stay on course. Yeah. Things like that. Um, so that's personal. Uh, I've been putting out content on TikTok. Uh, professional. Um, let me let me just say real quick, you know, I mentioned to you, I don't know if you'll do it. I ain't trying to tell you to do it, but you you got a TEDx story in there. <laughs> you, you you can do that. And 
And if you haven't ever watched it, go back to that front lines book, the blue collar leadership leading from the front lines. Look at chapter two, where I talk about, I believe in you mm -hmm. and, and go look up at TEDx talk by, by that, uh, Joshua Incarnacion that I talk about in there. He, he just had an experience where somebody believed in him and he shared, he, he did a TEDx talk and it ain't the same as yours or whatever, but he may, just his talk may inspire you that, Hey, I, I got my own story to tell and it's, it's powerful. And now you, you created all these new chapters. I mean, you, you, you got, you take all that and put it into a, a TED talk, you know, your whole story and turn it into something pretty powerful, man. That, that that'd be a, quite a platform for you to have. And it'd be, it'd be pretty wicked, but it's <laughs> a lot of work. When Rhea did hers, she, she spent like six months, you know, yeah, putting her story together, honing it down, chiseling it away and chiseling away at it. And, and, but, but it's awesome to have now she shares it with folks the same way you you could do the same thing. And anybody listening, Rhea just popped up her, uh, her link. You want to watch Rhea's TEDx talk It's R I A S T O R Y dot com forward slash T E D X and and might be something you want to think about down the road, Renee, because it just gives you a the work you had to put into it, it just gives you a polished story. I mean you could create a platform where you're getting paid to speak off of that TEDx talk. You know, people might see it and say, hey, I want you to come speak at our event or something like that. If you wanted to <laughs> tell your story and and you already got the story, you already know it because it's yours. Mm -hmm. You just had to polish it, polish it up. Anyway, let's move on to the professional future for you yeah uh, well I, i'm flattered that you think i i got what it takes to do a tedx i know talk. you do ain't no thanking that's awesome <laughs> I, it ain't no thinking i know Rhea knows too yeah thank you back the person who got to know is renee that's right yeah that's true that that's true yeah hey, i need to write that down the person we that can, needs to know is you yeah we're trying that's to loan good. you our belief our belief in you that's awesome. You you got a you got a gift of making people believe in themselves for real. Like, thank you for doing what you do. Okay, well, it, I, well I, I believe in people, and 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 I tell them a lot of times. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, I believe in them far more than they believe in themselves, and that's why you know I tell them, you got to believe in you. I can loan you my belief, but until you believe in you, none none of it matters. But but sometimes we have to loan people, you know, that mm -hmm. that belief. That's awesome. I like that. The loaning their belief. That's cool. That's a cool concept. Yeah. And put a 10 on people's head. You know, mm -hmm. I, I put a 10 on everybody's head. Can't nobody take it off but that person. And a lot of them do take it off. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I didn't put a 10 on their head and they yank it right off. <laughs> I said, no, nah, man, I'm a two. I said, okay, I can't do nothing about that. <laughs> I don't I've been start, guilty of that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't start seeing them as a two, though. I see them as a 10 and try to loan them belief and lift them up and and Anyway, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's cool. What but, you uh, got professionally, professionally on the horizon? Yeah, professionally. Uh, I, I think I need to I need to become a master of my craft and in my new position. So the competency um, side. That's right. I need to I need to do some competency work because um like I said, I, I'm immersed in so what I'm working on, what I do, I do two things. Uh, I do the administrative side of the developer inspections um process i guess like reviewing documents reviewing um post seat closed caption tv footage and just making sure all the documents are there that everything we see in that video is good uh documenting what's wrong that kind of thing assigning work to inspectors um just kind of like administrative stuff like that on the administrative side behind the scene of the superstars doing the work of the inspectors um and then the other thing I do is I do, in a nutshell, like data analytics for our uh, engineering construction group, uh, inspections group. So I'm tracking like KPIs, um, tracking turnaround time, you know, workflow durations, um, project progress, percentage completed, and you know that kind of stuff. Just kind of trying to make the big picture at a, at a high level of what's going on on our construction progress with the, we're trying to answer the questions of why are our construction projects not finishing on time or, or on budget, or why are they, or what's, what's going good, what's going bad, um, that kind of stuff. So that I've never done at this level, like looking at millions of dollars in contracts and stuff like that and making reports that people really use <laughs> so yeah. 
Um, it's it's very uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable, getting more comfortable now. But that's that's a play. Is I I need to uh, take some maybe take a course. Um, I'm figuring that out. I'm I'm looking at this this Tableau um, certification path right now. So I think that's the play. Okay, well, that's good stuff, man. Mm -hmm. And and, and you still reading. And, and and diving into content, different types of leadership. You always got to be doing that, right? Absolutely. Uh, I love, I wrote down a quote uh, from Stephen Covey and I have it on my my whiteboard in my, in my office and I see it every day. And it says, you're never too busy to stop and get some gas. Um, and that that means a lot to me because like, for example, like you said, are you still reading? Yes, that's gas, that's fuel. Um, yes. You can't you can't be too busy to keep on growing and learning and absorbing wisdom. You you need you need to make time for that. Yeah, slow slow down to go fast, right? That's right. Slow that's, down. That's to a go lean fast. principle, but it's also a leadership principle. It's the same thing that it's in his quote. That principle is, is in that quote. So, you know, slow down to go fast and going slow to go fast. So that's that that's phenomenal, man. And can you share? Have you? I don't know where you're at in Ria's book. Can you just share what that book? means to you so far because i recommended yes. you to read that i didn't know why really but it's about resilience i knew that and you had mm -hmm. your story about your spartan mm -hmm. ultra. there's a lot of resilience in, in that that story as well absolutely so i'm uh i'm listening to the audiobook and i'm at like the last 45 minutes or so um and what that book means to me is what the context of when you shared it with me is uh you were you were uh planting the seed about the, me doing a ted talk oh yeah 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 I said, watch her ted talk read the book and you'll see the see how she did it or either read the book and watch the ted talk i forget which way i said but yeah so you can see how your story could be a ted talk mm -hmm. so i've seen the ted talk and then now i'm reading the book which even gives more context to the ted talk which is amazing and uh and my my key takeaway for me, what's good, what's applicable to applicable to me with Rhea's story, um, and as what it in relation to the TED talk is like, I too had a lot of shame um, with my struggle with uh, suicide and depression. I had a lot of shame, and Rhea was sharing that too. It's like she had shame with her uh, trials that she had uh, a lot of shame, and she she didn't share it for for so long uh, because of the shame she felt but she's talking about throughout the book about how she could she overcome it and all the learnings she had and how she she was able to let it go um and then share it because people need to hear it uh and it'll help people and uh in a, in a nutshell that's what it that's how it applies to me is like you know i i always i've told myself the lie it's a lie that your story is not that that deep like n nobody's gonna care about that but it, that's that's irrelevant because there is absolutely a lot of people that that struggle with suicide uh that, i don't know the metrics but it's crazy i don't know i know it's an uh, there's an uptick now i just got a i got a, a letter in the mail actually like i don't know yesterday it doesn't matter um and it was a survey about the that the the uh the suicide rate in veterans has increased 70 percent within like the past three to five years or something it was like whoa that's that's crazy so wow yeah people the 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 need is there to share stories about overcoming suicide um but you know i wouldn't have even considered that because i had just so much shame when talking about it and ria helped me to understand that you know, you need to say it. You, you you got something that people can be can people can benefit from. And uh, I need to I need to get out of my own head and just talk about it some more. Yeah, that's good, man. And you, you might want to go listen to my Blue Collar Leadership podcast, episode three fifty one, where I, I teach you how to write a book in seven days. How yes. I write my books, like all those books you've been reading, I wrote them all in seven days from beginning to end. And then and and. Cause you you could you could write a book about your story and the way you read my book, so you see how the mm -hmm. format is simple. You know, thirty chapters, three pages each. If mm -hmm. you did that, you'd be like, man, I can't put all my story in that small of a book. But if you did that, it'd be such a good book because it'd be so concise and it'd be precise. And you got teach some points, tell some stories, and and you could have you just flow from your story all the way to the end. You know, through thirty chapters from the beginning 
to, to the end of wherever you are, you know, when you write that book and, and then you can do a Ted talk like Rhea did <clears throat> with the, the main components and turn that book into a powerful little story. And then you got a Ted talk to promote your book and, and your book promotes your Ted talk and both of them promote you speaking or, or something like that, or coaching. I mean, all kinds of things you can do. You, you, you're a go getter, you're an entrepreneur. You can do all these things while you're, you know, doing your regular job and, you know, you have your side hustle, but it's, it becomes a revenue stream for you too. And you're helping people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's both. And, and just something for you to think about, man, mm -hmm. you, you got the, you got the story. I mean, you right now in this moment, you, you write that book and it'd be phenomenal. And you could go back and listen to, to both of these videos to, to pull out some nuggets as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these two videos are almost, you could take these two videos and turn them into the book and into the, into the, uh, TEDx talk, you know, pulling out your stuff. You mm -hmm. already got it. You got your content there. You, you'd be good to go. Yeah, I'm about to press the gas again and knock over that light. And then we'll have to <laughs> get fired off. up. Then we we'll have to get you for follow up number three. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, all right. Anything that's else, awesome. Renee? I, no, that's it. I, I left it all on the table. Okay. I, I still love the, love the screen there. Renee Duron restored. <laughs> You you've been fully restored now, man. You can you can help uh, restore some other folks and 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 carry out your mission. But I really appreciate you coming back on. And Rhea had put up a note on the screen that it was episode number two in the real people getting real results. I don't remember what episode it is on the podcast, but it's probably around three eighty four. If I had to guess, for anybody who wants to go back and listen to it on the podcast and and get the full story of Mister Renee. And I really I'm proud of you, man. And you do you, you do have a story and. I was thinking when you were telling the story about the shoes and, and and meeting the guy that was running, walking with you and telling you he had some shoes he'd give you. And then, and then it didn't work out. And the, and the, the guy at the, the, the station gave you his shoes and just that, that whole story. It reminds me kind of, I mean, uh, of Les Brown's quote, coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. You know, there's a oh, lot of coincidences. Okay. Oh, uh, you think about when you were stuck in that mud till you got those shoes just think of all the coincidence, everything, all the time, and had to be just right. Everything you falling mm. back on the you know, all. If you think about that, and, and that's that's really what caught, brought me to become a person of faith was real story, how we met, and all that kind of thing. And that the night we met specifically, but just so many coincidences. And later on, you know, I started reflecting on that. I was like, all that was that was God making all of that happen. There's no, there were too yeah. many coincidences for all that to line up her life and my life, everything. And, and that was like, once we connected, that was like all of that stuff finally happened. I could just see God like, come on, man, go talk to the girl. And then she didn't want, she went out and talked to somebody else. And I'm like, I ain't talking to her no more. And then it's like, he just kept, you know, making sure that we met and coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. Amen to that. Look at that. And even with the, the little title, Renee Duron restored. Uh, what is that about? That's awesome. I love that quote. I got to write that down. That's good. Hey, that might be the title of your book. Oh, yeah. I love oh, your that. your podcast or something. You know, I don't know. But there Ooh, you go. That's good. That is good. I'm, I'm yeah. writing it down right now. Right this second. That's so good. Yeah, that could be your title. Then you have a subtitle. <laughs> got me fired up man that's that's some more of them coincidences happening right here in real time for anybody who's watching and, and listening <laughs> all right sir we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up renee i really appreciate you helping me help other people and i do i believe that's gonna happen i don't know what part of all that's gonna happen but you i believe you'll be back for follow-up number three and i'm looking forward to it whenever you get ready you got some more things i hopefully it'll be a, either a book or, or a video like tedx talk or something <laughs> like that and, because it's too easy. It's too easy for you to do. After after Spartan Ultra, writing a book, that's really, really easy part. And then doing a TED Talk might be another different kind of challenge, but you up for the challenge, man. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Thanks thanks again for being on the Real People Getting Real Results show, Renee. Thank you for having me, Mac. I'm excited. I never, I, it never fails when I talk to you. I'm all fired up. <laughs> well you need to talk to me more keep yeah, reaching absolutely. out man call me you probably right. don't call me because i'm gonna give you something to do when i when i give you <laughs> <ideas>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right folks all right thank you for listening thank you for watching
Talk to you next time. Make it happen or someone else will. It might as well be you. Are you serious about taking your career and your life to the next level and beyond? Check out Max Story's Blue Collar Leadership Series books and others, now available on audio, along with paperback and ebooks at Amazon and Audible. Please visit bluecollarleadership.com to learn about Max books, programs, special offers, and more. Thank you for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast.